Hey my lovelies, how are you today? So today is Women's Wisdom Wednesday. Say that 10 times. <laughs> anyway, so welcome to my channel. My name is Patrice Evans. I'm considered the belly dancing minister, Caribbean fusion, by the way. So if uh, you're interested in the things that I have on this channel, make sure you're subscribed, you've clicked the bell, and you've commented. Let me know what you think of the videos. Because on this channel, we unlock a woman's joy from her beauty, from the inside out, and we make sure that she's transformed body, mind, and spirit. We keep Jesus at the center of all that we do. So I hope that's something you're looking forward to. All right, let me get right into it. So I got a comment from one of the lovelies asking about how I journal. So I thought that was a wonderful, wonderful question because I've been journaling most of my life. I love to journal. So I journal in general because I just feel like I like to talk and I really like to flush out my ideas, my thoughts, through either talking, journaling, or videoing. So that's what I've always done. So I have piles and piles of journals for years. And, I, and if you've seen my one woman show, which I really encourage you to see, you'll see why I had to be my own counselor and my own therapist with God as my lead. So that's one of the ways I did that throughout the year. So it was my way of getting things off my chest and sorting things out. Sometimes I would sleep better if I just get it out. But I believe her real question was, in my walk, in my spiritual walk, because my last few uh, sermons on my Sunday live shows, hopefully you check them out on Sundays live at two, I've been talking about your spiritual giftings and how to develop them. And I believe she was referring to how I use journaling for that. So what I'd like to share with you today is how I've been doing it lately. All right. So we can always talk about journaling in general. But today I want to tell you how do I journal as part of my spiritual walk. So first of all, I just want to tell you the history where I am in the Lord. So if you're brand new to my channel, basically I'm a minister, so I'm definitely eating meat. They say drinking milk is like a baby Christian and that you need to grow to eat meat and be, you know, more able to help others grow and to be at a place where you can actually bless many um, with your gifting or you can have an office in the body of Christ, like a preacher, uh, an evangelist, or one of those things. So that's where you've definitely a matured Christian. You're very mature in your faith. So I would consider myself a mature Christian in that sense. And what I've decided is I am sold out. I'm what they've been calling sold out, where I've given my whole life to the Lord. So you can receive Jesus as your Savior in one day, and then you can just still be kind of like fumbling through, renewing your mind. And at one point, you completely give everything to the Lord, and you just surrender everything. So at a point in my life, I basically hit a rock bottom where I said, Lord, I'm giving you my whole life, whatever you want. But when I did that, then I started to hear him even more. I've been hearing God mostly in my life, but... Once that happened, I actually started obeying more and hearing more. And the more I obeyed and the more I spent time listening, the more he spoke to me. And so he said specific things that I needed to do with my life. For example, he told me to do a dance fitness program, and that's Saka. If you've known that, that's how this YouTube channel started with my fit dance fitness program. It's still going on, but it's online right now. But that was a big thing, and that was one of the biggest things that I did when I sold out for the Lord. So when you sold out for the Lord, you're like walking in the Spirit, meaning you're listening to the Lord day by day, minute by minute, and when He says to do it, you're doing it. And so this is going on so much in my life, all day, all the time, small things and big things, that at one point, I needed to start writing some of these things down. So after I started the first journey with Saka, I started to get more things that he was telling me to do and ministry, enjoy the Joy Party TV and, and the belly dancing and all these big things. And it just started to be compounding on itself. So then it started to get to a place where I didn't want to forget what God told me. So there were big ones that I can keep in my head, but then there were other things that he was telling me as I was praying. So I began to start a journal. So, you know, last year this was my journal and this year I wanted to finish this one first before I used my my newer one, but I actually have a journal available on my AyurvedaCurls.com site, and it is a beautiful Joy Party TV journal, so I hope that you get it. I'll definitely put a, uh, a picture up here on the screen so you can see what it looks like, but I wanted to finish the one I had already had before I start using the one that I have available, so you'll be seeing me with it in the weeks to come. But anyway, All right, so let me just share with you the question before I go any further so I can make sure I'm answering it. All right, so Empowered Afua, how are you doing today? Well, this is what she asked. She says, hey, Patrice, 
I really enjoyed your previous live streams. So she's talking about the sermons on Sunday at 2 Live. I know yeah, she might have been talking about the belly dance fit with Patrice on Tuesdays as well at 7 p.m. live. So check them all out. But anyway, I know you journal since you mentioned it in your How to Hear from God video. How do you go about doing that? I try to do it and be Holy Spirit led, but it feels awkward. If you have any tips to pass on, I'd be grateful to hear about them. Thanks in advance and God bless you always in a beautiful yellow heart. Thank you so much, Empowered uh, Afua. Well, yeah, I just want to make sure I was answering the, your question properly. You said spirit led. Specifically, you're asking how to journal spirit led. So basically, because I my background, like I just said, I'm at this level where I'm listening to the Holy Spirit regularly and I'm listening to what he's asking me to do in my life. I'm praying. So let's picture yourself going into your corner. Let's hope you have a corner. If you need a pillow, you can get the pillow too. I'll put that up here on the screen too. And you can go to adventicals.com for that too. So I have my little corner. And one day, if I give you a day in the life, I'll let you see what my corner looks like and everything. I'll clean it up a little bit. But anyway, I go in my corner, my prayer corner, and I sit there and I'll sit there and pray on my knees or I'll just sit there, like not on my knees, just sit in the corner. You know, like a little kid saying, I'm mad about something or whatever it is. And I'll just pray to the Lord and pray. Then I'll read a scripture sometimes, but I'm spending that time alone and I'm just getting things out of my system. And I'm, after I'm praying, I showed you the steps to praying. There's a part where you're listening. That part where you're listening, you want to have your journal near you so that you can write down what you hear. Okay. And the reason why I want you to know, I have three reasons why I've outlined why it helps me so much. One of the ones I already told you because he started to tell me so much. Because when you start to sit there and pray with him, he's going to start talking to you a lot. So you want to make sure you get it all down. You want to put the date on top. If you can get the time, the date, maybe even what you were doing right before that led you to come over and pray. Just so you can encapsulate that moment as best as possible. So in the future, when you're having those moments again and you forgot God already answered that, you can go into your journal and say, oh, wow. God already answered that prayer. I forgot. You can do that with just regular journaling, but you can especially do that with the time when you spend with the Lord. Because the Lord doesn't really change what he already told you, and you don't have to keep asking him over and over again. So these are the three things that it helps me with the most. And walking in the Spirit is exactly what it sounds like, walking in the Spirit. So I have pieces of a puzzle sometimes that he gives me. He'll give me one little piece, and he'll just say, you know, I want you to... Stop the class, your local classes. Okay. I want you to start performing. And I'm just like, okay. So that's all I got. Stop my classes and performing. So I'm writing that down, putting the date and everything, when and why it happens. So now I'm just like trying to figure that out in life and reality, praying with him on a daily basis. Then he gives me a bigger thing. I sit, sometimes he can't talk to you because you won't sit still. So when I sit still, I hear more. And then within that big thing he's telling me to do, I want you to perform professionally. There's steps to take to do that. So now I need smaller answers to get to the bigger steps. So then I need to get before him in my regular day to say, Lord, what do you want me to do to get there? I need a, a new, what do you, which direction? What kind of performing? What kind of dancing? You know, like, and then he'll show me that. Then I'm like, hmm, that seems kind of weird. Then he'll give me confirmation. And I'm writing these things down so I can remember them and so that I can remember God told me this. The third one is remembering that God told you because you might get discouraged. So my third reason is because sometimes I'm going about doing it and it's so different and, and maybe it's so big. There was one time he told me to do a, a DVD and it was very hard to believe that I was gonna do that at the time. And until somebody else said, God told me you're gonna do a DVD, then that was confirmation that I, it was really God that told me that he knew I needed a nudge and I went and I did it. I thought it was with a bigger dance fitness program. So I tried to go that way first found out it wasn't, and see that those small steps in between to get to the big one. So you get the big thing he told you, which is a big piece of the puzzle, but then you need the steps to get there, and you got to pray for that too. This keeps you before the Lord, and when you stay before the Lord, you got to hear him, but you got to remember so much. So I filled this whole book up, and I filled, you know, so many books up of all the things, especially this one. This is when I really got into it more. It was like early end of 2019, and all of 2020 is when I started to hear so much that I had to write them down. So it turns into a, a conversation with the Lord 
more. So remember, those are the three things. You'll give you big pieces, which will probably be where you're going to be, the bigger picture. But to get from where you are to there, you're good. That, so that you need to write down. It's very important you write it down. So you can say, I didn't dream this. This really happened. So when you get those confirmations, you'll be like, wow, I have proof. God told me that on Tuesday at whatever time. And look what happened. You know what I mean? You have proof that for yourself so you can believe. And the more you see confirmation, the more you're going to believe. And it's going to grow your faith and your walk with the Lord. But then you'll start praying for the pieces. And you'll put that in there too. God told me that I need to do this kind of dancing. So I need to take these classes with this person. So you're writing down, God told me to take with these people, with this person. And you just write it down, you know. Sometimes you might even be wrong. Maybe it's you wanting that class. So you need to put a question mark if you're not 100% sure. So this is your way of growing. And so those are step by step. And again, the third one is when you're really feeling discouraged along your way and you feel like maybe God didn't really tell me that, go back to your journal, read it, and that will encourage you to believe again and to have faith and pray over it. And he'll probably can't tell you again. He doesn't change what he said. You just lose your faith and you waver. So being spirit led with journaling is really in your prayer time and listening to the Lord and writing down what you truly believe he said. You have to truly believe it. It is not coming from you. It's this brightness it's very clear, it's sweet, kind, warm, and sometimes it'll blow your mind. You won't even believe it for yourself. That's why you got to write it down and the time and everything. And when you really believe it's him, don't put a question mark. But when you're not sure with those steps along the way, because that's when you have to use the practical things, sometimes you over practicalize it, if that's a word, you, you get too practical yourself and you come up with things that make sense to you. You lean on your own understanding and that wasn't what God told you. Sort of like, um, Abraham and Sarah. God told Abraham he was going to have a son. So he just assumed it must have been with the concubine. So he leaned on his own understanding. When you do your step by step, you really have to be patient and wait for God to truly tell you those steps. And when you truly believe it's him, write that down. When you're not sure, put a question mark because it may not be him. But that's with you. You're rushing because you can't wait to get to that end. He may take 10 years, he may take five, he may take a day, it may just be quickly, but you got to wait on the Lord and you'll know the difference when it's this peace that comes from the Lord and just step out on faith and also journal when it actually happens. That'll give you strength those days when you feel weak as well. So there you go. I hope I answered your question. It was really fun to be able to share that because I love journaling. If you want me to do more about journaling and talk more about it, I definitely love to do that. Give me your email, patriciaevans1 at gmail.com because I am putting some things together to help you more in detail with these kinds of things. And I'd like to let you know how I'm doing it. All right, so God bless you. I hope this helped you and I look forward to seeing you next week on Women's Wisdom Wednesday. Bye.